Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Be sure to stay around to the end of the video to give some input on future builds, and remember that liking and subscribing gives you better dexterity saves in your next game. Today we're building everyone's favorite potions teacher, Severus Snape. Created by J.K. Rowling, Snape was a complicated character, often seen as an antagonist by Harry and his friends, even though he was literally a red herring every time. Hopefully your party will trust you, even if you are from Slytherin. Snape, Snape, Severus Snape, 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 Severus Snape. Turn to page 394. We'll begin with our goals for the build. First thing we need to do is make sure we can brew potions to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses. Secondly, we'll make sure that he has the gravitas of the great Alan Rickman. And finally, this is a spoiler warning for a 9 year old movie and a 13 year old book, Snape kills Dumbledore, so we'll get access to the 5e e equivalent of Avada Kedavra. For stats, we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. You can roll stats if you want, just use this as a basic guide. Intelligence is number 1, wizards use it for spellcasting and potion brewing, which is pretty much 90% of this build. Charisma after that for intimidation and convincing dark lords that you're down with that muggle extinction business while you're plotting to overthrow them. Constitution next, it helps maintain concentration when some brat lights your robe on fire and deal with some of the fumes from potion brewing. Wisdom next, some potions are medicines and medicine is a wisdom skill so we don't want it too low. Dexterity next, Snape doesn't do any backflips. Well, he does in my fanfiction, but that's not canon. Finally, we're dumping strength. You don't need to jump or climb. You've got spells for that kind of thing. We're actually going to build our own background, which means that we can take two skills of our choice, take Arcana and Nature, two tool proficiencies, Alchemist and Glassblower, so you can make potions and put them in something, and the Researcher ability from the Sage background. This lets you figure out where to find unknown information. Snape is going to be a variant human. Take the Alchemist feat from an Unearthed Arcana, gives you plus one to intelligence, lets you double your proficiency bonus when using alchemist supplies, and you can identify potions with sight rather than taste. Best part of this is that you can make one healing potion automatically heal the maximum amount once per short rest. Use your free points to bring up intelligence and constitution, take any language you like, and proficiency with intimidation. As a first level wizard you get two skills of your choice, medicine and history are good things for a teacher to know. Skills of a spell book, make sure you let everyone know it's the property of the Half-Blood Prince, and take six spells of your choice. Charm Person charms a creature that fails a wisdom save for one hour, making them friendly. Detect Magic lets you see magical auras in their school of magic for up to ten minutes. Disguise Self works like a polyjuice potion, changing your appearance for one hour, but you can't make yourself more than a foot taller or shorter, so don't get too crazy. Illusory Script creates secret text that only designated creatures can understand. Sleep puts creatures to sleep around you, roll 5d8 and put out that amount of HP to sleep, you have to roll the entire creature's HP to sleep so you can't just knock their leg out. Finally, Magic Missile is a good basic offensive spell, firing three bolts that deal 1d4 force damage and hit automatically. You have all these spells in your book, but can only prepare an amount equal to your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier, so four at this point, but you can switch them out at any long rest. This doesn't apply to cantrips, so grab Poison Spray, which deals 1d12 poison damage to creatures that fail a con save of 8, plus your intelligence, plus your proficiency, if you're willing to dump potions on people. Light creates a light that has a 20-foot radius of bright light and a 10-foot radius of dim light after that. Finally, Prestidigitation does a bunch of small things, heating or cooling liquid would be useful for brewing potions. Lastly, you get Arcane Recovery, which lets you recover some spell slots on a short rest. That number is equal to half your wizard level rounded up, so one first level spell slot at the first level. Second level wizards choose a magic school, and we'll be choosing the Artificer subclass from the Eberron Unearthed Arcana. This is not to be confused with the Artificer class, which is its own Unearthed Arcana. Wizard Artificers can infuse potions which lets you spend 10 minutes and a spell slot to create a potion. You can have three at a time and you have three options. A potion of healing heals 2d4 plus 2 HP. A potion of growth lets you use the enlarge effect of enlarge reduce, increasing a creature's size by one, giving them advantage on strength checks and saves, and increasing weapon damage by 1d4. Lastly, a potion of climbing gives you a climbing speed equal to your walking speed for one hour. You can also infuse scrolls, which lets you use your arcane recovery to create a scroll instead of getting slots back. At third level, wizards can cast second level spells, so check out Detect Thoughts. It lets you read surface level thoughts for up to a minute, and you can probe deeper if the creature you're targeting fails a wisdom save. They can also use an action to make an intelligence check against you to end your mind reading early. There's also darkness, which creates magical darkness within a 15 foot sphere for up to 10 minutes. 
Hold person paralyzes a target that fails their wisdom save. It lasts for one minute if you can keep concentration. And Misty Step lets you teleport up to 60 feet away as a bonus action. Build the list you want, just keep in mind you have a total of six prepared spells at this point. You can also infuse new potions using second level spell slots. A potion of mind reading lets the user cast detect thoughts, which we just explained. A potion of greater healing heals 4d4 plus 2 HP, but you can still maximize that with your alchemist feat. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, but we'll go for a feat. The skilled feat gives you three proficiencies of your choice. Deception, performance, and insight will help you get closer to any dark lord you're trying to bring down. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Slow lets you choose six creatures to make a wisdom save within 120 feet. If they fail, their speed is halved and they have a minus two to their AC and deck saves. They can only take actions or bonus actions, not both. And if they cast a spell that takes an action, roll 1d20 and if it's 11 or higher, the spell is cast on the next turn and uses their action that turn. Remove curse removes curses on a creature or object. Lightning Bolt creates a 90 foot line of lightning, forcing deck saves and dealing 8d6 on a failure or half on a success. Counterspell is a reaction that shuts down spells of third level or lower. It can also shut down higher level spells with a check of 10 plus the spell's level. You can also use those third level slots for more potions. A potion of invisibility lets you and everything you're carrying become invisible for an hour. A potion of superior healing heals 8d4 plus 8 or 40 with the maximum healing from Alchemist. A potion of water breathing lets you breathe underwater for an hour. Six level artificer wizards can infuse weapons and armor, meaning you can spend 10 minutes channeling your spell slots into something to improve it. With a second level slot, you can improve 20 pieces of ammunition, making them magical and giving them a plus one to damage and attack rolls. With a third level slot, you can infuse a weapon or a shield, granting it plus one to attack and damage rolls or AC as the shield. You can only choose one enchantment at a time. At 7th level, you get 4th level spells. Dimension Door lets you and a creature of your choice teleport up to 500 feet away. Blight forces a constitution save on a creature within 30 feet and deals 8d8 necrotic damage on a failed save, half on a success. You can also make a Potion of Resistance, which gives you resistance to one type of damage. You roll a d20 to determine if it's Acid, Cold, Fire, Force, Lightning, Necrotic, Poison, Psychic, Radiant, or Thunder. A 4th level slot can also be used to infuse armor to have plus 1 AC. 8th level you get an ability score improvement. Put it in intelligence for higher saves and better casting. Ninth level wizards can learn 5th level spells. Modify memory lets you change a memory a creature has from the last 24 hours. They make a wisdom save to resist this, but if they fail they are stupefied until you're done changing their memory. Cloud Gale creates a noxious cloud with a 20 foot radius that deals 5d8 poison damage to creatures inside it. It can last up to 10 minutes if you maintain concentration. Dominate Person lets you control someone who fails a wisdom save for up to a minute. They re-roll the save whenever they take damage. You can also use a 5th level slot to infuse a weapon or 20 pieces of ammo to be plus 2 magical weapons. 10th level artificer wizards are superior artificers, meaning they can infuse 2 weapons, armors or ammo bundles, and have 4 potions and another spell scroll. 11th level wizards get 6 level spells. Globe of Invulnerability creates a 10 foot radius globe that automatically shuts down spells of 5th level or lower trying to enter it. It's good for some defense against those dark arts saving you some slots of the counter spell. It lasts for up to a minute with concentration. You can also use 6th level slots to infuse armor up to plus 2. 12th level is an ability score improvement you should be able to cap your intelligence and start working on that constitution for better concentration. 13th level you learn 7th level spells. Teleport lets you teleport yourself and 7 friends to a place you're familiar with on the same plane of existence. Your degree of familiarity determines how accurate you are so don't go going somewhere you're not familiar. At 14th level, Wiz Artificers become Master Artificers, creating an item from the Magical Items tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide, page 144, tables A or B. Pick whichever you like, just know that you'll need a month to make a new one if it breaks or is used up. At 15th level, you get 8th level spells. Power Word Stun works like Stupefy, stunning a target with 150 HP or less makes a constitution save at the end of its turns to break the stun. Feeble Mind deals 4d6 psychic damage to a target within 150 feet. They make an intelligence save and failing it, their intelligence and charisma scores drop to 1. They still recognize their friends and try to defend them, but are about as smart and charming as a dead fish. 16th level is an ability score improvement. More constitution means more health and more concentration. 17th level, you get 9th level spells like Aveda Kedavra or Power Word Kill. Pick a target within 60 feet, and if they have less than 100 HP, they die. That's it, no save, no nothing, but if they have more than 100 HP, it does nothing. 
And now Severus can do everything he does in the book series, but we're so close we might as well finish it off at level 20. Level 18 you get Spell Mastery, letting you choose one first and second level spell to cast as cantrips. I'd go for Charm Person and Hold Person respectively, even if it's not as romantic as it sounds. Level 19 we're going to cap our constitution or come very close with an ability score improvement depending on how you roll. Finally our capstone for the build is a couple of signature spells, letting you cast two third level spells once per day without a spell slot. Now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how good of a build this is. Number 1, Power Word Kill is the best way to kill someone, provided your party has brought them below 100 HP. Even if it has a crazy health pool like a Tarrasque or an Ancient Dragon, you get to cut 100 HP off the end of the fight which can be huge when everyone is running out of spells and abilities. Next, your potions let you be a wizard that can heal, and you can heal quite a bit thanks to your alchemist ability. Finally, you've got good abilities for role-playing and spells for utility, making you very helpful outside of combat. Now let's talk weaknesses. You have no armor proficiency and a dex mod of zero, making your armor class a maximum of 10. Combine that with a wizard's d6 for hit die, and even a high constitution modifier can't save you from a melee fighter just beating you to death with a hammer. You're also rocking a lot of concentration spells, which can only be cast one at a time. Finally, you have no strength or dexterity, meaning you'll struggle with mobility, difficult terrain, and saves for those skills. But you're not going to be involved with anything as base as a fist fight. You're a wizard and one of the best. Keep your distance, wipe people out with your spells, and use those potions to make sure your party is operating at 110%. Just make sure you're in the party you want to be, as a murder hobo might kill you because he wants your wand. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. Now that we've covered a Harry Potter character, I think we should probably cover a Lord of the Rings build at some point. Vote in the comments for Aragorn, Legolas, or Gimli. Come back next week, we'll be getting our ledger clear, so stay tuned for that.